Okay, this is part two of me reading uh, Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51. But this right now, I'm still into Jeremiah 50 here. Uh, the reason why I'm reading this is because of what's happening with the Kurds and the uh, ISIS in Mosul uh, seems to uh, be going along with uh, the book of Nahum in our time. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> well, I tell you, you should watch the beginning of the first video. The reason, I, I, yeah, I've been in the Bible prophecy for a long time, and uh, of course when the Saddam statue went down, like, you know, got out of it. But then with ISIS coming in, and with the Kurds and everything, I'll tell you why as I go down through here, you know. But um, this is part two, so I'll get to it now. Okay. Okay. Your mother shall be sore confounded. I think this is talking about Babylon. Ancient Babylon. Yeah, your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nation shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. And to me, the hindermost of the nation, means the last of the nations, to me was ISIS. It was, it was the latest nation, and now it is being... It's going to become a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert, like what happened to Babylon. Because of the wrath of the Lord it shall be uninhabited. It, it, sh it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all their plagues. So in other words, what happened to Babylon to me is, is, is like a foreshadow of what's going to happen to uh, ISIS or maybe Sunni Islam. Because is to me, ISIS and Sunni Islam are the same thing, except that ISIS is Sunni Islam uh, in a fundamentalist way. Okay, put yourselves in array against Babylon, round about, all ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. And um, to me, that happened to the Gulf War, and it, I think it's going to happen again. I think it's actually happened right now, due to that ISIS is... And it's uh, in Mosul. Ba Mosul to me has become like the the new Babylon, and it's going to be wiped out by the Kurds. Shout against her roundabout. She hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Uh, take vengeance upon her, as she hath done. Do unto her. You know what ISIS to me. This is talking about ISIS now. What happened with ISIS? Uh, what ISIS did to the the inhabit to the the innocence of of the, the Kurds and the Yez Yezidis and all that stuff, um, it's now going to come back on them. That's what I think. That's that's what I think it could be talking about here. Okay, cut off the sword from Babylon and him that handled the sickle in the time of harvest. <laughs> For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every way, everyone to his people, and they shall flee everyone to his own land. Now, I've seen this take on different meanings through the years. Uh, for instance, the first time I thought it was talking about the uh, UN inspectors. Uh, they were cut off and then they fled out of Iraq before we bombed them because they were feared that they might, you know, become uh, human shields of Saddam. Now, I think this is talking about ISIS in our time. It cut off the sword from Babylon and him that handled the sickle in the time of harvest. And the time of harvest could be our time, because right now it is the time of harvest, it's fall. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn everyone to his people, and they shall flee everyone to his own land. Most, to me, this means, I think this could be talking about the ISIS. Most of the Muslims who are in ISIS are not really native to Iraq. They have come in from all parts, the foreigners and stuff. They're the ones that are stuck in Mosul right now. They're going to try to flee from the oppressing sword, which are, will be coming from the Kurds, as I read on further here. That's what I'm thinking here. Oh, you know, I think I might... I'll read a little further, then I'll stop it, then... Okay, yeah. Okay. Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria hath devoured him. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hath broken his bones. And I don't know what that means. 
<laughs> don't know what that means. Okay. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, and I will, have, I ha, as I have punished the king of Assyria. To me, the king of Babylon in our time is a blamer because he's the one that can make or break Iraq. He actually, uh, Bush before him was like the king of Babylon because he conquered, pretty, pretty much conquered it, but then he, he gave it to the 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 Kurds and Shia the the Shiites who rose up and then created ISIS and now to me a blamer is the king of Babylon he pretty much owns Iraq and uh, so anyway he I think this way a blamer is the king of Bab Babylon he doesn't want to go after ISIS because it's his baby really. But due to Putin going in and showing a blamer how it's done, you, know, you don't bomb empty pickup trucks. You don't uh, that with with million dollar cruise missiles. You you don't uh, bomb buildings without ISIS in it. You don't warn them and say, hey, we're going to bomb it. But Putin showed how it done, how it's done. Now a blamer is forced to his 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 hands are waxing feeble. He has to turn against his own creation, and so. Yeah, now, to me, a blamer is being punished by having to destroy his baby. Okay, and I'll bring Israel again to his habitation, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan, and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. And to me, that's already happened, but it will happen again. In those days, and at that time, uh, you know, I better stop it here. I better see how much time is left here. Oh, I can still go. I'll continue it here. Okay, let's push this down.